Hello everyone, my name is Duncan White. I'm the managing editor of the International Fire and Safety Journal. I'm here at Intersecond Dubai and I am delighted to be with uh, old friends here on the Fomtech stand with father and son dynamic duo John Otterson and Evan. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you, Duncan. Nice. Good morning. Evan, it's, uh, the first question is coming to you. And um, it's great sitting here with uh, such a, a well-known brand, father and son duo that uh, is so well-known across the, across the industry. And uh, it's Fomtech, you're, you're working with a, with a brand that is synonymous with quality, with innovation and really pushing the boundaries into, into new technologies. Tell me more about that. Well, for, um, for the past 10-12 uh, years, we, we've been working on this uh, transition we're now all uh, on the precipice of. Uh, we, we, the Florian Free uh, is the future and uh, we, have in, we introduced our Envario range of products 10 years ago and uh, that's still what we're here today to show off. Uh, we, as you said, we, we like to believe that our products are of a, a certain quality and um, again we're here to show off our two star products alongside all of our other, other products in our pro uh, product catalog. Um, I think um, we're very happy with what we have. I, uh, I think that that is an understatement. You talk about your star players in the in your portfolio I think every one of the uh, the products are star players in their own right and you just keep exceeding those boundaries uh, year on year and uh, it's a credit uh, John I'm turning to you because you are in many people's eyes mine included the face of foam the face of uh, foam innovation and um, we've spent uh, many hours chatting about it around the world and uh, it's always a pleasure for me to sit down Evan touched on uh, where you are on this precipice. Um, where do you see that going? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's all about um, uh, doing the right thing. You know, we we understand this is uh, this is a holistic uh, endeavor we're on to. Um, it's not about changing a concentrate. It's a it's a it's a change of system, uh, which requires lots of data, and uh, that's what we're up to: gathering data, making sure that people. Um, understand the need for a holistic approach. So that's why we keep testing. And that's why we're, we're constantly adding uh, bits and pieces of information to our product. Because obviously, um, going out there doing these transitions, there will be so many different things that need to be done. And the, the customers are asking for advice and that's what we're uh, up to giving the right advice, making sure we have the right approvals and documentation. And so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of testing going on, Duncan. Yes. It's, uh, I think if one thing is, uh, is a constant when talking to John, it's test, test, test. And uh, I, uh, I recall back to an interview we did last year where you were excited to the mm. point of uh, being unable to stand still about what was happening in some of the tests that were, that were going on. And I think that uh, when you're, you're looking for a, for a product, you need something that does exactly what it says on the tin and with uh, what you see is what you certainly get with, with Fomtech and um, it's, uh, it's really the way that uh, as, a, as a procurement officer working within industry you want to know that you can turn to somebody like John or Evan and uh, get advice that's going to be on the money, not all about selling the product but ensuring that you've got that data to go back on and fall back on knowing that uh, you can ask more questions and more questions and more questions and these guys are always going to be uh, happy to, to answer it. We talk about the transition. Mm -hmm. Transition um, is the buzzword. It's been going on for years. We're seeing it uh, together, gathering momentum. What does, uh, what does Fomtech and what does John Otterson see the way in which the transition is going to be going over the next 12 months? Well, I think we've already done a lot of transition projects already. You know, there's a lot of the uh, large multinational companies that wanted to preempt um, legislation and, and make sure they were in line um, as fast as possible. And so there's going to be more of that. Uh, you know, we're looking at all the vertical markets uh, and making sure we have product and solutions that meet the demands of, for all of those. And we keep on adding data points, making sure uh, the transition can happen in a, in a safe way. So I think 2025 is really 
going to be a very busy year for everybody in the industry. Um, and uh, uh, I see that uh, it's going to be probably a, because this summer, you know, the PFOA regulation in Europe is going to going to kick in, and so people want to be in um, in compliance. And I think they're going to keep us very busy <laughs> in 25. Yeah. Well, John, I don't. I was just thinking in my head there. I don't think that there's ever been a an interview that I've done with you where it's always busy. Every every year, every year is busy, and a and a I think that when when you do what you do so well, it just gathers that momentum, guys, gathers that traction, and um, that is a credit to, to you guys. In we, I've not mentioned the ties yet today, but well, this is a good uh, a good opportunity. It's always uh, I always make sure I get a great tie when I come and visit these guys because. They are the eminent professionals when it comes to uh, neckwear, but uh, that'll be the subject of another podcast. But let's move on and talk now about um, that. some success stories, some things that um, you have been prouder of than your normal stuff, things that have really gone well that you'd like to, or you're able to share us with us. Well, I, I can dip in, Evan. Evan's been also very busy with the transition because transition, you know, the time we're in now um, uh, is two, two sides of that. On the one hand, you have the uh, straightforward transition to floor in free foam, but you also have a transition away from C8. And, you know, there's a lot of large companies out there who have C8 systems and they, they, they're so complex, these systems, so making a full transition to floor in free it's not something they can do um, immediately. So we have been helping out a few larger companies and making sure they can bridge that, making sure they have C6 product available uh, in uh, before they can do the transition. That happened in 24 in, in this region. We've done uh, some, uh, some work and helped people doing that. And then obviously, um, uh, going forwards, uh, the transition is is all about giving the right advice, because as I said, you know the holistic approach is key, and um, we 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 fear that you know unless they have the right information and data, they think uh, some people might think it's about changing the concentrate, which is not the case. In very few cases, uh, it's it's a change of concentrate. You need to think new, look at your whole system, look at how it affects your proportioning, how it affects your discharge device, how it affects your application density. And so that's what um, what we're doing now. We're, we're giving that advice. We, you know, foam school is a big part of that, making sure that people go through foam school and get that insight. And so we're, we're really quite busy. And back to success stories where you're talking about, you know, I, I can't talk about specifics because, you know, we, we we don't talk about customer-client yep. relationships, but I can guarantee you that we've, we've done a, quite a lot of uh, very successful transitions over 24, um, uh, directly as Fontech, also a lot through our partnership with uh, partners like Viking Corporation. Um, and then there's been helping people, like I said, in the Middle East, bridging that uh, you know, C8 transition. Um, and uh, we've done some work in the Central Asia with also large oil companies. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, I mentioned last year we had some very interesting uh, breakthroughs in 23. And um, I had two breakthroughs. Um, one is just about we're doing testing uh, this spring. We weren't able to finish that in, in the fall of 24. But that's going to bring one of those breakthroughs online. Uh, the other breakthrough was our, our work with Millspec. So our, our Enviro mill is now just shy of being qualified by the QPL the Navy, and uh, we're going to then make our big impact into the U.S. market. So that's very exciting, isn't it? It certainly is, and uh, you could see how the smile was widening, and uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's always uh, great things going on with Fomtech. And I listened there where you talked about it's not just about the concentrate and and that's so right you look at the hardware that uh, needs to be used the technical knowledge and competence in in the application of it knowing how the product's going to react using the equipment that uh, we provide uh, firefighters with the best equipment these days but at the end of the day it's about education it's about knowledge and understanding and the way that everything works so it's knowing what your foam concentrate is capable of doing, what the finished product's going to do for you, looking at how the uh, it reacts with the with the heat, 
and this is where the videos and all the testing that goes on in FOMTEC, all that information is available for the education. And Evan, I think that uh, we're, you and I are, are sat on the uh, this side of the camp being the, the, the young guys that are looking up to the, uh, the wise old owls and uh, it's education for me, I, uh, I make no, um, I make no um, excuse, uh, not excuses, but I, I didn't enjoy school. School for me was all about education, all about uh, interactive, interpersonal skills, playing sport and working out what I was going to do once I, once I got out of school. All, all my education was, was after leaving school, both experiential and uh, I was 46 years old when I did my degree because I found something that I was interested in. And I think that you look at education now. We've talked, and your dad's talked about the fact that education of the customer is vitally important. And uh, you can see that. And uh, just remind us why that education of your products to the customers is so vitally important. That is It's um, mainly a matter of fact of going back to the basics. Because over the past, well, I haven't been in the um, in this market for a long time but uh, I know that um, it's always been you you take a look at what you have what fuels do you have what kind of an application do you have uh, and you go through all of these steps and that's mainly what we do in our foam school we go back to the basics we show the people coming participating that you just need to consider all of these facts which we used to do back in the day but now we can't base it on the C8 material. We now have the fluorine freeze. And um, being our form school, we need to use some products to have a baseline over to show what we're talking about. So we, we base it on the Enviro range. But um, it's more or less go back to basics. And that's something that people might have forgotten over the past 15, 20 years. Because um, it's always been a given. When you had C8, you knew it would it would extinguish. Going over to C6, it was a bit more difficult, uh, and it wasn't a deal breaker. Uh, but now the safety margins have uh, shrunken quite a bit, and you need to be uh, on top of uh, all of those uh, factors when you go ahead and do a transition project, or if you install a new system, all of these factors need to be taken into account. And that's the main bulk of the phone school. Okay. Back to basics. And yeah, um, I can echo that. And it's it's exactly that. Every opportunity for frontline firefighters to, to get out there and learn. And, and a lot of times I question that people buying the product aren't the ones that are using it. The ones that are using it are the ones that are on the end of the nozzles at uh, 3 a.m. when they're watching uh, fires uh, trying to um, consume properties or oil tanks and um, I've I've been to uh, events where foam schools and other other educational events with with manufacturers and, and scratch my head to think why is the the guy that signed the check that procured the product sitting here when it's when it uh, he's going to be tucked up in bed with his teddy bear when the, the fire's going down and the first he's going to know about the the issue is when the firefighter put in a request for some more foam so it's common sense and this is where I uh, I've been criticized in the past for being very vocal about it's not rocket science it's common sense it's, it's bringing in people like John and Evan to to talk about their products and then putting that in a way that the end user is going to understand because if they understand it then they're going to embrace it and they're going to they're going to work with it and uh, there's a there's a saying in the in the world that uh, if you invent something and you want to know whether it's any good then give it to a firefighter because if it is good then they won't have broken it within five minutes and we can certainly say that uh, what FOMTEC uh, are doing has been tested that uh, that well that there's going to be no breakages. <laughs> um, John, I'm going to come to you uh, to, as part of the wrap up. Intersec, vitally important part of the industry calendar now no longer a regional show it's uh, it's firmly embedded itself on the on the world map of uh, fire shows the quality of the people that are that are coming through the doors now aren't just linked to the middle east we're seeing that, that a global attendance what do you see that you're going to get from intersect why is it so important and um 
What are you hoping to achieve from this week? Oh. Well, obviously, um, being at shows is all about uh, staying in touch with the market, meeting up with um, our local partnerships, uh, and staying in touch and get the vibe of what's going on in the region. And we also want to bring uh, the information out, making sure um, we communicate um, what we uh, we are up to, uh, what uh, what we've been doing in the past 12 months, what's coming in the 12 months ahead of us, and then bringing that information out. That's really uh, very important, obviously, to be, be present here. And the Intersec is the most uh, significant show in the region, and um, we are we are proud to be a part of it. And uh, we're happy to meet with all our good friends around the region and and get the vibe of what's cooking. You know, that's that's really why we're here, and and uh, we really do get that insight into the marketplace and bring all the innovations out. You know, there's a there's a lot cooking. There's a lot coming. <laughs> there's a smile again. It gets wider when we're talking about things that are coming. But yes, we've we've uh, we've heard some of the uh, the stuff that's going to be coming. Mill spec that's gonna that's gonna widen that smile a, a, a huge lot more and uh, I can guarantee you that this won't be the last time that I'm sitting down with uh, with the father and son duo of John and Evan but you know what it's something that popped into my head as we as I was listening if I was uh, snowed in in front of a fire and I had five seats of who I was going to sit down and talk to as one of those five this man would certainly be one of them because uh, It's always a pleasure. There's uh, there's never a dull moment, and uh, we're looking now at the future that's coming on behind to uh, to fill some very big steps, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks. Thank It's you. always It's a, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you very much. And top ties in the show. Oh yeah. Take care. <laughs>